Ciao Human TV of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well. We start immediately today speaking about two big official news about Juventus and then switching towards a crucial, important, sad day for Calcio. Yes, you will tell me, Beppe, why will you speak about Calcio? Why you will you speak about Tonali? Here, it's not Milan channel, it is a Juve channel. But if you want to understand the moment that Juventus is in, if you want to understand this Mercato, but also the future Mercato of Juventus, well, it's important to understand what's happening with Calcio. And I tell you today, I'm super sad. Not because of Milan, not because of Tonali, because I, can, I couldn't care less, but because of Calcio, today is a sad day because there was a door and that door, unfortunately, was already unlocked a bit. We knew that that door will just be pushed so that not one, but more players would leave Serie A and we are speaking about Italian players. Well, that's what's happening today. A really important day, the 21st of June 2023 is a crucial day for Calcio. No way back, my friends. And then we'll go back, of course, to the last news. Uh, last news that will be also controversial, I'm sure about it. That possible swap between Rovella and Sergei Milinkovic Savic. We will come back on all these news, but first let's speak about the official news. Arkadiusz Milik, since yesterday, no surprise, he is a Juve player for the next three years. Juventus, at a certain moment, we were all doubting a certainty. We were sure that he will be renewed. Well, at a certain moment, that certainty was put in doubt because Juventus tried to find a deduction on the set price, on the set option to buy. With already Lazio and other teams ready to jump on the player, Juventus didn't find an agreement to reduce the price, but at least they found a way to split the 7 million. So Juventus will play, pay three times 2.1 million over the three next coming years for Arkadius Milik. I tell you, if it's the Milik that we saw in the first part of the season, it's a bargain. You can't find another player for 7 million euro like that. If we see the second part of Milik, well, 7 million is probably the right price for a striker that I tell you I'm quite satisfied. Then yesterday, he entered the heart of million of Juventini with a fantastic, beautiful message. Not long, but beautiful one. Because he wrote, look, I am aware that I am a privileged person to wear these colors, to wear this shirt and to play for these supporters. And then he continued to say, I will continue to show on the field that I deserve to wear black and white. Fantastic, beautiful message. Not a long one, a synthetic one, but what a beautiful message. Especially if you're swiping to the right and you go to that third picture that is actually showing Milik with a Juve shirt, 2002-2003, showing and saying to the Juventini, ragazzi, I'm one of you. And I love that message. Enough for me. To say that he's my favorite player, absolutely not. It's the field that matters. But, you know, these kind of things are really nice to hear and to see. Anyway, we have to say goodbye now officially to Angel Di Maria. Surprise, also there, no. Because Fagioli already spoiled it. You remember with that gift of that shirt, Grazie al Fideo. Well, Angel Di Maria, three parts. The first part, question marks about his will of really showing, about his incompatibility maybe to adapt to Italian football. That second part after the World Cup, fantastic. He left to the World Cup with a hat-trick in Champions League. He came back from the World Cup with a hat-trick of assists. No, hat-trick of assists before, hat-trick of goals after, but also a lot of fantastic goals. We remember that goal versus not. What a fantastic goal. We also remember that fantastic, beautiful first goal of the season against Sassuolo. Ping pong smash. So really some beautiful moments of Di Maria. Not enough. I will continue to say probably the most underrated player of this generation. I was honored that he has chose Juventus. It was one year. He will he become a Juve legend in my mind? Absolutely not. I will forget about Di Maria in the future. Also him linked to a moment of Juve in difficulty. But anyway, I believe it was the right decision to stop with him. I think that the Benfica supporters will be super, super happy to join him back. Let's go to the other news. But before that, before speaking about the moment that I'm really sad about, let me speak about a moment that I'm super happy about and proud about. You remember, we started the minimum 500 likes per morning video yesterday and we were already at four consecutive days yesterday i said let's try to reach the fifth one yesterday you all surprised me 729 likes as we speak something i was absolutely not expecting so thank you for that you are just fantastic let's see if we can reach sixth consecutive day what you have to do is reaching the 500 likes you put a maximum of like you subscribe if you didn't yet we are that close to be at 26,000 
subscribers on the channel, which is actually really a beautiful achievement. Let's go to Corriere dello Sport, Tonali Premier AS. Because yesterday out of nowhere, and it went really fast, there was that first small news that became bigger and bigger and bigger. With all the journalists reporting the same things, Newcastle is on Sandro Tonali. Ragazzi, this is now the picture of Serie A. If in the past some players try to go abroad, especially at the end of their career, it started a long time ago, so with Schilacci going to Japan, there were some players going to China, some players going to Australia, even Del Piero, for example, some players to MLS. Not a lot of players at their peak of their career were leaving Serie A. At the time, Serie A was the destination was where you had to do your peak of your career because that's where you had the most possibility to win, to be in a competitive league. You were also watched by the entire world. Well, slowly but surely, we were shifting towards not anymore being a destination league, but being a transitional league where you come and you leave. But especially for foreign players that were dreaming about other links because they didn't really have that bird link with the country. Yesterday, since the first time, we are really speaking about a big player of Serie A, really representative player of Serie A at his peak that is leaving. And we are not speaking about any player. It's not a Juve player, but we are speaking about Sandro Tonali. Let me show you in really fast the picture of the career of Sandro Tonali to understand what Serie A became. He played Youth Academy of Brescia. He grew up at Brescia. Since a kid, since he's really a kid, he has dreamed about one thing, wearing that red and black shirt. Because that's the dream of every kid. One day, wearing the shirt that you probably bought as a fake shirt when you were a kid, your parents offered it to you, and wore it and becoming La Bandiera, the Maldini of Milan, the Del Piero of Juve, the Totti of Roma, the Javier Zanetti of Inter. That's the dream of every Italian kid. And then you're thinking, of course, about winning the Scudetto, winning the Champions League, winning the World Cup with Italy. What Italian players, persons are the most proud about, that's what you dream. After Brescia working really well, Milan signed him on loan with an option to buy and he totally flopped that first season because probably jumping from a reality like Brescia to a first team like Milan was maybe too much for him. At the end of that first year, Milan was about to send him back to Brescia. Then, for an act of love, he said, you know, I'm also ready to lower my salary. I really want to prove myself at Milan. They found an agreement. Second year was a solid, fantastic, beautiful year, year of Sandro Tonali. Third year, he showed himself as really a starting bandiera. One that was really showing that Milan DNA. He was happy. He was the most representative player of Milan with Leao, with Mignon, but Tonali was Milan. And today, without any regrets, pay attention, it's not official yet, but he's about to leave. And I'm not speaking about Premier League, Manchester City that just won the Champions League, Liverpool that is a really strong team that is rebuilding. I'm not speaking about Arsenal with a lot of youth players that started a kind of winning project. I'm speaking about Newcastle. Newcastle that I will always have a lot of respect for, for their history. I was a big fan of Newcastle, Alan Shearer and so on. But it's not the Newcastle that I knew as a kid. It's a new Newcastle. It's the one of own by a state. It's the one that invested a lot of money to actually buy themselves that qualification in Champions League. Guys, again, I'm not hating. I'm not jealous. They deserve what they have. Premier League worked a lot on that. But a player like Tonali leaving for Newcastle he's saying a lot he's opening the door and he's not the only one because he's the first one and then there will be Barella and then there will be Chiesa and then there will be this because today the Italian players they were also thinking I love my mother amo la mia mamma I love the food I love the climate I love this why should I really go to another league because I have everything I need here. I'm playing for the club of my heart. Why should I leave? Some players that went to Premier League, they were also coming back a bit sad. No. How many tried the experience in Premier League and were not really satisfied? Well, Sandro Tonali could be the real first one that is opening that door and showing the way to a lot of players at their peak leaving Serie A because we anticipated it and I'm telling you so since so many years, Serie A 
but also the other leagues are becoming feeder leagues for the Premier League. And today we have the officiality about it, like Milik being a Juve player, like Di Maria leaving, we have also the officiality that Calcio became officially a feeder league for Premier League, because it's not only Tonali, we are also speaking about Vicario, Vicario that was that close to go to Inter, like actually Fratesi, that's another story. 20 million euro offer from Tottenham, like this, a goalkeeper at the peak of his career going to Tottenham instead of going to Inter. We are speaking about a club that is not playing the Champions League, Tottenham. We are speaking about Inter that played the final of Champions League a few days ago. You understand? A Vicario choosing for Tottenham instead of Inter, what it means, a Tonali choosing for Newcastle instead of staying at Milan that is playing Champions League and so on and so on. Well, on the other side, if they are able to offer him 8 million euro a season, if they are offering to Milan between the 70 million euro and 80 million euro, hey, how can Calcio refuse? It is just impossible, ragazzi. So understand that when some people are speaking about Bellingham, when they are speaking about Grelish, about these kind of players, Alvarez and so on, you can't anymore say, eh, but my favorite club of Italy missed out on that player. It's just impossible to compete anymore. So pay attention because uh, it's not over. Of course, what is happening? There have consequences, a lot of money going to Milan and Milan going really fast on other players. Fratesi that has been in competition between Inter, Milan, Juve, Napoli even, Roma. Inter was, and if you're looking at Gazzetta dello Sport of these last days, that close to be at Inter, looks like a Bremer 2.0 situation is happening again. Why? Because last year, remember, we sold De Ligt and we went immediately in two days for Bremer. Well, Milan is about to do the same. They will sell Tonali with that cash money, they will go for Fratesi. Attenzione, it's not a certainty yet, but look how it can change the market with, again, Inter in the mud. I know that Inter fans are still hating, they're saying Bremer was not good, we are happy, we prefer Acerbi. Anyway, yesterday Juventus, they tried, it's not that they didn't try, because then you will tell me, eh, but we are missing out on Fratesi, why? Look, he will become a champion. Eh, ragazzi, Juve, they tried. Yesterday they had a meeting with Carnevali, Carnevali really explained the situation. They are one team ahead of all the other ones, but everyone is in competition. We are asking for 40 million euro. Ragazzi, this is what's happening for every player. And Fratesi, the same story, eh? Sassuolo, he will go to Inter, to Milan, maybe even to Juve. Will If he does well two years and he's leaving for Premier League, if he's doing bad the first year, like Tonali, three years and he left for Premier League. He said it himself. I want to go to Premier League, but at the moment today, I'm not, uh, I'm not ready. So, ragazzi, this is... Uh, the story, I will continue now with the Juve news. Pay attention because today there is the under-21 team of Italy that will start at the under-21 Euro. They play against France. It's already a kind of final. But I'm really curious and I believe also the Newcastle fans will be uh, really curious to watch that game because Tonali is playing in a 3-5-2 with Udoge on the left, another one that is going to Premier League. Uh, Carnesecchi in the goal. Pay attention because Juventus is still monitoring. Scalvini, sometimes, from time to time, I hear his name linked to Juve, there is Rovella that will come back to Juve, Miretti on the bench, Nyonto, another one, Mercato linked to Juve, so there are some players that we can monitor, and also Cambiaso. But yes, ragazzi, I told you that I really wanted to speak about Sergei Milinkovic Savic and Rovella. Well, Gazzetta dello Sport is reporting in big titles, Juventus has the plan for Sergei Milinkovic Savic. Sometimes it happens that players, they need to wait years before wearing the shirt of the team that was really chasing them for so many times, where Sergei Milinkovic Savic could potentially become now, during this Mercato, a Juve player. Of course, we are just waiting for Rabio. By the way, tic tac, tic tac, because he needs to give his answer before the weekend or latest at the end of the week. Kent, so Saturday, Sunday, and then we will know about the future of uh, Rabio. Juventus would go for Sergei Milinkovic Savic. Lotito is opening the doors at 40 million euro. More the time will go, more he is supposed to lower the request. Why? Because Sergei has one more year of contract. And that's why Giovanni Manna, Tognozzi, and probably even Giuntoli that can potentially start on Monday, 
if not on the 1st of July, but maybe Monday, Tuesday, well, they could really go for him waiting and then trying to lower the fee. But Sarri is obsessed with one player, Rovella, Rovella, Rovella. Juventus said, no, we don't give you Rovella. We don't loan you Rovella. We don't sell you Rovella. We believe in him. We also signed him for 20 million euro two years ago. So no way, forget about him. We believe in him. Allegri already knows him. He's counting on him. Then Gazzetta Lo Sport is supposing that maybe waiting a bit after the tournée in USA, Juventus, if they didn't find or didn't find an agreement with Lazio for Sergei Minkovic Savic, they are still insisting they could potentially reopen the door. At the moment, these big titles means totally nothing because if you are reading the article, you clearly see the plan of Juve is not to give Rovella. They don't want to give Rovella. There is one percent of possibility that during the USA tour or after it, if they don't find an agreement, it could potentially be inserted. I don't believe in it today. It can happen, of course, but I believe that that article of Gazzetta dello Sport is a bit misleading. So don't get too furious before listening to me or reading the article by yourself. Let me know what you think about uh, that possible swap, Rovella Milinkovic Savic. Juventus is also thinking about the future. Can I nail this a possible extension until 2027 after one year of being at Juve? So they really believe in Heisen, Nongue, Can I nail this in a lot of these young players? Do they believe in uh, Bonucci? That's the last news. Big question mark. After yesterday telling you that Bonucci said Juve, punto. Let's see. And I believe that Giuntoli will have a lot to speak and maybe having a one-on-one -on -one to Bonucci to really understand what the situation is. Ragazzi, that was it for the video. Maximum of likes. I don't know if we reach already now 500 likes while you're, while you're uh, watching. If you didn't yet, do it. Subscribe to the channel. Grazie, forza. You, thank